This conference will now be recorded. Somebody have received the email. Please share it with them. So after the break, we were talking about matplotlib function. Yes, so I just explained you the code that we have written on the first day. That is what I was trying to do. So I, we didn't wrote any code. We just I just explained you the the reasons why we did what we did. Right. So it's there. Everything is there in the notebook. Today I have a different notebook, so we will look into it. You can create a new notebook now. So everybody has joined so we can start the session, right? So today we will see how machine learns basically. And now you will say that so yes, we have already seen the linear regression. Yes, we know how machine learns. Is this your answer or do you have some other answers for me? Do we all know how machine learns? No, we don't know. Okay. No, okay. And do you remember I taught you a linear regression? Do you remember that for single variable? Do you remember that? Yes, yes. So we're gonna explore that more because that was a that was for the single variable, but in real life, what happens? We usually don't have a single variable, we deal with multi variables. So we call that to be multi-variable linear regression. So we'll try to see how that, you know, how that works out. Okay. So we'll try to understand more about linear regression. We have uh, understood the base. We have the basic understanding, but we want to learn more that how does it works. So we all must be aware of the fact that how does a linear regression work for a single variable? We have a, a input variable which is x. Then we have the function, some function which is h of x, and we have different points on the plane. And when we try to plot a line to match all those points, and when we're trying to match those points, we could have different lines. We've already seen it. But let's try to recalculate it. We, we could have different lines. We could have multiple lines. We could have a line somewhere here. And then what we'll do, we'll try to create the, we'll try to check which line has the most error or the highest error. And then we'll try to look the line which has the least error. We select that line. So how does it work basically? So firstly, what, what is the algorithm does? First of all, our, our algorithm, it predicts some value right it randomly predicts the value it's look at the input and it try to predict the output then it does go back and calculate the error that what is the error it did made and then it go back and learn from its mistake and try to improve that then it's go back again and do the prediction then again calculate the error and so today we are going to see how this calculate the error works basically how do we select the best fit line? So let's try to look at that. So this is the cycle. You know, every machine learning algorithm or deep, even deep learning algorithm works this way. The deep learning algorithm will assign some random value, first of all, and some bias also. Oh, let's leave bias for now. But let's say it just predicts the value randomly. Then it go back and check that how accurate that value to the original value. It calculates the error. It find out the error. It learns from its mistake and it don't make the same mistake. It go back and do the same cycle again and again for every algorithm that you can think of linear regression, logistic regression, SVM, any any model that you can think of. So all those all these model work on the same cycle. They predict they calculate the error. They learn they go back and they again predict and so on and so forth. So what do you mean by algorithm? Let's look at this term. You know, we have heard this a term a lot. 
algorithm 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 let's try to look at what does a algorithm means so according to google algorithm is a set of mathematical instructions or rules that especially if given to a computer will will help the will help calculate the answer to the problem right this is the cambridge dictionary definition that we have and now you might be hearing this or you might have read this line somewhere or hear this line a lot more so time that my you app uses the algorithm to predict if fans of a particular band will also like music from another band and this is what we use when we are trying to you know trying to show some fanciness and we don't want to tell people what exactly my app is doing no the people from the uber or the ola will say our algorithm is designed in such a way that it will predict the price based upon the amount of request it is receiving and based upon the amount of you know the number of availability of the cab in that particular region and also time and distance and few other factors so but it doesn't tells you you know how does that actually happen it just tells you that they have an algorithm which does this snapchat have some sort of algorithm which which uh, with which you are able to do image superimposition and you are able to get image uh, you know emojis or different sort of shapes on your face you know so that sort of thing you know instagram on different different apps that we go to so they use this algorithm so this is what some people or most of the people that we see when they are trying to hide something when they are not telling us you know what exactly this thing is so we'll try to understand what thing is i guess you have already a you know idea about it so i have already written it a, a word used by a programmer when they don't want to explain what they did so when i am doing something and uh, i got some predictions and i don't want to tell you how i did it what was the reasoning behind it why i did something how i did it what was the code for it so i'll say i used this algorithm or i created my own personalized algorithm and then i'm able to predict the output so you'll say wow that that's cool but that doesn't answer to your question how did you do it i mean what was the methodology or uh, you know what was the techniques that you use that you are able to achieve these results now as we, as i talk about so in linear regression there can be multiple lines right this line this line this line multiple lines could be there but how can we check or how can we make sure that which is going to be the best fit line we've already seen it but let's try to memorize it again so let's say we have two lines this one and this one down at the bottom so this line is predicting this error and this these these, these different errors and this line is predicting the error as to be this 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 so we can clearly see that the line which is at the bottom has a huge amount of error the error is very high because the data points the original data points they are very far away from this line but in case of this line they are closer to that but we wanted to be sure and how can we prove that mathematically mathematically so let's look at that so we use residual sum of squares and now you must remember this i've already taught you that we try to take the value that we have uh, the original value and the value that we have predicted we try to find the difference we try to take the square and then we try to minimize the error right we do the minimization so that this is this is what we call square uh, squares uh, residual sum of squares now this is another jargon or this is a new terminology that you might come across or whenever you go online and read any research papers or maybe some blog about the data science or machine learning they will talk about the cost function so what exactly a cost function is so this is our cost function minimizing the error residual sum of squares have another name a fancy name that people are given to this to look smarter you know so they give it a name as cost function okay 
and uh, now that you know we have seen uh, some of the things though there are a lot of vocabulary that you might come across right when we talk about as well sum of square or cost function there are different vocabulary term that we see somebody would say that this is a cost function somebody will say this is a loss function sometimes you know somebody would say this is a error function or somebody would say objective function because cost function is used in all different fields in the field of neuroscience in the field of operational research in the field of mathematics right an objective function could be it could be a minimization it could be a maximization it's not going to be the case always when we are, when you are trying to minimize something there could be a case when you are also trying to maximize something maybe you are trying to maximize the output maybe you are trying to maximize the profit of a particular company right so there could be cases for that but these are the terminologies or these are the jargons that you will see on the internet when we talk about the error the residual sum of squares or the cost function we usually call it cost function so somebody is saying my data set by the data set that we provided it to Vidyuti, what is your question? By data set, what did we provided it to? I did not get it. Can you repeat your question? Vidyuti, can you repeat your question? I guess she's busy. So let's look, let's go back to the Jupyter notebook and let's see. What do we mean by that? So I'll ask you to create, I'll ask you to create a new notebook with the name of maybe gradient descent. And this is again, another fancy name that we have given to the cost function. Now that I guess you've understood that we have a lot of names and we've given this to, cost to our calculation that we are going to perform. So, Viduti is saying, sir, it had been sent when you asked how machine learns. Sorry, Viduti, can you unmute yourself? Can you uh, can you tell me what exactly you are trying to ask? I did not get the question. Vidyuti, can you unmute yourself and then you can ask the question. Not going. Okay, maybe the network issue. It had been sent. Okay, can we talk about this maybe later on? Maybe towards the end of the session, we'll talk about this. Okay, let's, let's focus on the work that we had in hand. Now we are going to create a Jupyter notebook, which will be about the gradient descent algorithm. We'll try to understand how do we do the minimization of any cost function? How does it look like? You know, how does the minimization actually happens? So basically you can go to your Jupyter notebook, create a new notebook, then you can go up here and then click on markdown. When you click on markdown, then you can, you can type for your reference in future if you want to look at this notebook then you can say uh, notebook and imports and packages if i press shift enter i can clearly see uh, the markdown but it's not the same as i'm able to see at the top so what changes do I need to make to make it look like the same? Okay, hold on. So I need to add the hash sign in front of it so I can make it bigger. If I also want to increase the size of it more, then 
decrease the size actually then i can do this this way now uh before moving forward what i will do we will import the basic two libraries that we will be using for now at least we will write you can write it together with me you can write matplotlib dot pyplot as plt i guess now that you are familiar with this code as you have seen this multiple times you can say import numpy because numpy is something that we are going to use then you can run the cell okay numpy as np i need to mention it here correct so i have done the imports can you share the file this file you will get this file at the end of the session dr suresh you will have this file when the session ends because in this file there are a lot of things that needs to be covered and you can see learning rate and all so lots of stuff is there so i'll try to cover it step by step sir you are typing the wrong spelling it's you are typing it out as m p p o t it's import sir let me share the code with you this is the code that you need to type please everybody do along with me hang on i need to make it below this so i can have a symmetry okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to tell you how did i made this thing look like this theme okay i'll say no hang on i need to go up and select it as markdown and then i can start typing i'll say example 1 simple cost function so when i talked about earlier i said it to you that our cost function is going to be some function so this let's assume this is our cost function this is how we are trying to reduce the value this is a cost function this is how we are reducing the value so it is x square plus x plus 1 so now i want to write this how do i do that i'll say f of x is equals to x to the power 2 plus x plus 1 now if i run it you will say sir it's not the same it's not the same that i see above so what do i what do i did what is the difference that you have there so let's try to address that difference so what do i need to do i need to put two hashtags and what you can do or you can start with by just by putting one hashtag and then you can notice the difference if you will do this then this is what happens but this is what we don't want it what we'll do we will put a dollar sign in front of it and also dollar sign at the end of it now if we do this can you see the font has been completely changed let's try to make it look like this let's do something more okay if i do this then it's this okay then so now it's just like the uh, one that we have created above so this is another type of coding that we have we call it to be latex l a t e x the way uh, we have uh, what do i call it like uh, example.com the way we have html coding like if i go and do view source code 
and you can see they have uh, this title they have this code for title title then they write their example but, so in the same way the latex coding is written just like the html so we can use different different notations to do you know different stuff okay i hope you are all following along you are able to do the same thing that i'm trying to do now let's do one thing let's define this function now that we have written this code this is our function in generally if you write it in your copy or maybe somewhere else just let's write it in the form of python so python can understand so what i'm going to do i'm going to define a function which will be f of x now that you all are aware of functions so this is the reason why we did function so you can you know feel the relativity you can relate to it x square plus x plus one so this is my function that i have it's the same right x raised to power 2 plus x plus 1 it's the same right now what we are going to do we are going to make our data points we don't have a csv file we are going to create our own data points how we are going to do that we will say you can type this as uh, make data we'll say np dot lin space then we'll say start we my i want my uh, i want my point to start at minus three i want my point to stop at three and let's say the number maybe equals to um, let's call it simple let's keep it five i mean and see what happens when we do this see what happens okay now that we've run the code let's look at those numbers that we have just created and see what is the output for it so now we can see with the help of lin space function we are able to create numbers between a starting point and the ending point just by mentioning the number the number uh, the the amount of numbers that we want if i keep if i make it like 10 i'll get 10 numbers but i want more data points so if i'll say 100 i'll get 100 numbers there if i'll say 500 then I'll get 500. Now you might be saying, how do you know about this function? Okay, I'll answer this question also. So what do you need to do? You need, just need to type in Google np.linspace. It will take you to the documentation. This is the page that it will come. And you can come here and read about it. What does the lin space do? So numpy or np dot lin space it has these arguments as start, stop, number. It also has another arguments, but we'll stick to the first two, three. So as I said yesterday, also it's very important for you to read the documentation to understand what the documentation is trying to tell you so that whatever functionality you need in your program you can read the documentation have that functionality in your code so first of all let's understand what this function returns so returns evenly space number over a sir you haven't run this code you need to run this code first of all import numpy as np type this code press shift plus enter numpy as np that's what you need to type yeah okay so what i was saying is that this returns evenly spaced number over a specific interval 
So return number evenly space sample calculated over the inter interval start and stop. So these are going to be a starting point and stopping point where we will have the last number and this is going to give us the, the numbers that we want in between. So the endpoint of the interval are optionally be excluded. So they will not consider the endpoint, but up till this point, that means excluding that point and before that point, they will divide that. So it has different parameters. It will say start array life, like starting value of the sequence. Then uh, it will have the stop and it will have the number of samples generated. By default, it's 50 and must be negative. So uh, let's go back and let's delete the number. Let's see how many we get because they are saying by default it's 50. Let's see if they are, if it is true or not. Let's check. So yeah, I mean, like we have 50 points, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, and you can say one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So yeah, we have 50 points. So that means if you are not going to mention anything about the number, then still you are going to get your answer. In the same way, if somebody asks me, do I need to mention every time the start, stop, and the number? I would say that's not always true. Let's generate a new number just by using np.lin space. Lin space. Then I'll just say minus three and three. And that's that's what I'll say. Okay. Let's see now if I get any number or not. Definitely, I will get numbers, right? So let's delete this one. We don't need it. Let's delete this one and let's keep it as 500. We want the number to be 500. We want 500 data points. Now, what we will do, we will plot these not these but the function that we have created we'll plot this function on a graph because uh, we all love visualization i don't know about you but i really love visualization because that gives me the feel what exactly my data is trying to tell me just by looking at numbers i cannot say just by looking at the equation i cannot say anything about that equation so i need to visualize it so what I'll do, I'll try to visualize it, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'll just say, line by line, we're gonna do that. So I'll just, oh, just hang on. I'll, what I'll say, I'll say plt dot plot. I'll plot, and what should I pass in the arguments? I'll pass the argument as f of x, the function that I have created and uh, that's all for now. I'll see that's all for now and I'll run it. But it's not running. What's the reason for it? Let's see. PLT dot show. okay yeah my bad i have to pass in the two variable i have to pass the values for my data points and then i have to plot the function on on top of it that's what i have to do because for plot if you go and check for the plot documentation it will say it need two variable the x and the y that's right ma'am we need two variable i was looking for this answer from somebody thank you so much you gave it so we need two variable to pass in. What we'll do, we'll pass in the numbers of the data set that we have created. Right, ma'am. Right, right. I was just checking if everybody is active. 
or if you are feeling sleepy or getting bored or something so we'll do it this way now it says x is not defined we have to pass in the values of data point that we have in the function and this is how we get our graph now maybe i want to increase the font size i can surely do that so what i'll do i'll give it the font size as 16 font size is equals to 16 and then try to notice the difference okay we have the error line turn do no font size i think there is some problem with it okay we cannot mention that here i am sorry again <laughs> we cannot mention that font size here now that we have plotted our graph we want the labels here yes yes ma'am line width we can do that but we'll do that later on in the next maybe next code that we'll write so what we will do uh, we will add the values on the x what does the s x axis signifies what does the y axis signifies and i hope you remember that so can somebody point out the code for it can somebody write down the code that i want i want to know what is the values that i have which values i have on the x axis x axis and which values i have on the y axis i'll be just right back please write down the code in the comment section everyone please try to run your code okay that you all have shared uh somebody says plt x label yes dr vinita what is the value i should put in that values of x axis hmm, let's see values of values of x axis i don't want that i want x to be here so what I'll do, I'll just say X because these are the values for X. Right. And uh, somebody says values for uh, hmm, log Y label. Dr. Neetu says log. Okay, let's try this. This is something new. Okay, there is a notation problem. Let's make it this and, but this is a invalid syntax. Okay. Log is not defined. 
I guess we have to import the log log that could give us something. Okay, what about the y axis? Somebody help me with the y axis. What do we write in the y axis? Okay, but Dr. Vinita, I need my function on the y axis. Okay, I'll help you guys. f of x here we're gonna have f of x because that's what we have on the y-axis right the module y label it's not working spelling mistake okay so everybody is replying that's great to see you all engaging that's very great now what we want to do we want to limit the values for my x values and the y values so i have the x values starting from minus three and they are going till plus three right because that's where the we have generated all these points and if i talk about the values for f of x so they are in between uh, uh, let's call it to be seven and it's going up till maybe 13 so can somebody help me with that particular code that how do i do it how do i set the limits we have talked about this in the earlier sessions as well i'll give you two minutes then i'll write Mm, this is talk to define x and then plot define xml and i did not understand what you think okay so dr needles give me this code i need to make it lowercase plt yeah let's try to do it my plot lib has limb there is no plot y limb okay there's an error ma'am that i'm getting X limb, okay. But no. See our graph, what happened to our graph? We don't want this. Some problem is there. Y value. Okay, Viduti says it's, let's try Viduti's code. Let's see what we get. Yes, that's, that's nicer. That's nicer, that's what I was asking for. And also if I want to increase the size of X or the FX, what I can do, I can use the fig size and I can increase the size of it. So I guess you can also do the same thing. Pick font size, make it 16. Just write font size and make it 16. So yes, it's highlighted now. So what else can we do? That's it. So now we have our plot. We have a plot for our function. 
the function we have created which is our cost function so this is how our function is going to look like and uh, this is usually the case that you see the function is of this this shape that we usually see right now we'll move on to slope and derivative so uh, there is another question that i have we can we do it in this way uh, can we do which which thing you are talking about minimax n i don't understand pass the argument pass argument for what to limit no 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 if you go to google and uh, look for the documentation of matplotlib dot pyplot pyplot documentation then you will find there we have to only use the predefined function which matplot has already given us we only need to use them so these are the function that i found on the matplotlib website you can see there is a function also that ma'am was talking about line width we can also use that so there are different different function that we have you can we can only use these sort of function right so to limit the values the function that we have is violin violin and excellent okay now we will talk about uh, slopes and derivative so everyone is familiar with slopes and derivative do we all know what slopes and derivatives are or what happened today i mean i see you got you are not excited i mean is it boring please let us know derivatives yes slopes and derivatives i don't see responses you know the way i see this responses yesterday where is the energy i guess you haven't had your breakfast i didn't <laughs> you can see my energy <laughs> okay so if you if you are excited then there here's a challenge for you if somebody i know but can be repeated yeah sure sure we'll do that for sure we'll do that trying to understand it's a bit challenging okay so you did not understand uh, dr ashok you did not understand whatever i've explained till now you did not understand the code relationship between the change in y or the change in x that's right dr pankaj that's right so dr ashok is saying trying to understand bit challenging so uh, is it challenging uh, am i I'm, i'm not able to explain it very well is this the case so what is the problem you know what is the problem you are facing what what you didn't understand can you point out dr ashok can you point out to that so till the time we get response from dr ashok here is a challenge for somebody who know what a derivative or a slope is so challenge is you need to create or i would recommend you if you can create a python function for the derivative of f of x and that function name should be df trying to run the code but not work which code is not working can you share the error with me i'll help you so everybody please a derivative of function is representation of the rate of change correct correct yes we all know about derivative but can we solve this question so dr ashok can you share the code with me that you are facing problem with maybe i can help which code is not running the reason why i'm going slow because i feel like it might be difficult for someone to understand this topic so if still it's a problem then we need to look into it 
So please help me with the code that you are facing problem. And can anybody help me with this challenge? Create a Python function for a derivative of f of x. This is our f of x. We need to create a function which will solve the derivatives. You have one more minute. Code window. Can you share code in the window? Which which code you want me to share? That's what I'm asking. For the plot, okay. For the plot, you need the code, okay? Cool. So I'll share it. Yeah. What does a parameter number do in lint space? <laughs> I, okay, I'll talk about this earlier as well. So let's let's address it. This question, okay? So number of samples to generate. That's what the num parameter do. It will generate the number of sample. What does what does we mean by the sample? The number, I mean, uh, the data point that we will see. If we, the default value is 50, if uh, we type it to be 500, so we will see 500 data points. So I guess nobody is able to solve. So let me help you with that. So what we will do, we will define a function. Oh gosh, yeah. What we will do, we will define a function which will be df of f of x. Okay, Dr. Pant and LM Pant gave me the answer, okay. Okay, great. Dr. Neetu, she's back again. Great to see the responses. So what we want to return is, what is the derivative of it? Let's go and check. It's 2x plus uh, 2x plus 1, right? So that's what we're going to get in the answer. Okay, so it's going to be 2x plus one this is going to be my df function or the derivative function okay and uh, so said f of x okay cool so did you understand how did this happen or if not that's all right i am going to sh show you something then you might understand it okay let's come back to the slide So uh, let's 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 try to understand why we have this function. Okay, we have created this function, and what is the purpose of this function? What exactly we are trying to achieve from this function? I have talked about this earlier as well, and let me talk about it again. So basically, we want to find the minimum cost for the cost function, the minimum value of x. What could be the minimum value of X? So we could have our cost function or the loss function to be minimized. So how we are going to do that? So we have to find, we, let's say we are at this point, okay? And we want to move downwards. So how can we move downward? We have to find the slope first of all. So as you can see this in this picture, when we are at this topmost point, the slope is very steep. And as we are moving closer to point zero, where the cost is zero, the slope is not as steep, right? The steepness is decreasing. It's decreasing and now it's zero. We have a zero slope here. So this is the point that we want to reach of our cost function. The point where we have the cost or the loss as zero. That's what we want to achieve. So that can be only achieved with the help of derivative because uh, derivative is going to tell me that uh, what is the slope and which direction I should move. I'll give you a better idea of, uh, of this, you know, in the next slide. So for that, we need to do the calculus. I mean, uh, to do solve this problem, we need to have understanding of derivative and that's a calculus power rule. 
so let's say we have this function this is our cost function let's say this is our cost function so how can we take the derivative so we might have to take this down and we have to reduce the value from it right the power minus one and we take the power in the front so let's say we have this function this is our uh, uh, cost function it's x square plus 5x square sorry x cube plus 5x square plus 7 so 3 will come in the front then it will have 3 minus 1 then 2 will come in the front then it will have 2 minus 1 and 7 will be 0 as it is a constant so then after solving this we will have 3x square plus 10x so i guess you are able to follow this thing that i try to make you understand did you understand what i thought great okay so let's uh, get to an analogy let's say okay uh, let's say you live in australia or you are you are in australians mountains let's get that to analogy so we all love mountains or most of us might love mountains okay let's let's ask you guys how many of you do love mountains great vinita love it i do so everybody does love mountains okay great great so let's say uh, no sir i love to be in indian mountain <laughs> i love this i love this answer of dr suresh <laughs> he wants to live in the indian mountain that's that's great that's great but well, just just for the analogy let's assume that you are in australia <laughs> let's assume that you are in australia and you are in the mountains of australia and it's winter time and you know you go for the skiing you go for the skiing and uh, there's a good thing about the mountain and a bad thing about the mountains as well the weather is unpredictable you know you cannot predict the weather what is going to happen to maybe in a next hour maybe in a half hour or the mountains like these right so let's say you went for the skiing and uh, even teleportation is locked teleportation is locked down okay okay so let's let's get to the analogy let's say that you are in the mountain of australia you went for the skiing and you were with your crew and you lost your you lost somewhere there was a snow and you know due to some reason some due to climate reason you lost and you are you were somewhere at this point and uh, you know you feel like ki ye kahan pe main basically fas gaya hu aapke pairon se zameen khisak gayi aapne jab dekha ki ek tufaan aane wala hai ek bahut bada tufaan aane wala hai and you are stuck here and you are you are you know you you can feel the wind you know in your jacket you can feel that you can feel that uh, wind or i can say you can feel that cold at that point of time and you really want to get back to your home wherever you were staying and have a cup of tea or maybe a coffee so what is the thing that you will do when you want to get to the you know get to your home so basically what you will do you want to find out this you know the the sh shortest distance to your home and how can you do that you have to look for the slope and if somebody is going for the mountain if this happens to you please don't follow my advice <laughs> this is a disclaimer that i have to put so please don't follow this advice so if you are stuck here and you want to go down you want to climb down early in a very short period of time what exactly you will do you will look for the slope and you will look for the uh, distance which which is the steepest and which is the shortest distance that you will try to cover and then you will move forward in that direction you will reach another point then you will move forward and so on and so forth then you will reach your home and you will sit back relax and then you will say i will never go back to for skiing in my life <laughs> so this this could be the graph but this isn't uh, the you know the steep of the mountain this is the concave this is the concave it has a peak but we are talking about the valley we want to go to the valley so this is the graph that i'm talking about let's say you are at this particular point and it's a concave convex graph basically you want to reach to this particular point right this is where you you are staying this is where your house or maybe hotel that 
wherever you were staying this is the point that you want to reach maybe you are at this point so you will be here and you will be looking for the shortest distance so how you will do that you will need to use the slope or the derivative you need to use the slope or the derivative to find the slope at that particular point and you will see which is the steepest one because the steepest one is going to be the shortest one so on and so forth you will start walking towards it you will reach at this point you will again check then you will look at different point and see which is the shortest distance and so on so and you will reach at this particular point so this is what our cost function is if we look at in 3d if we have multiple variable this is how it is going to look like like a mountain which is flipped and which has a valley so we want to climb down to that particular valley and we want to reach at a point where the cost is minimum where where, uh, where is a house right where we were located where we feel comfortable so this is what happening with the cost function here you can see we have cost and we want to minimize it so are you guys able to follow what did I, the analogy that i tried to give you did you understand it great 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 so this is what the cost function is right so this is what we try to minimize now let's go back to our notebook now what we will do the next thing that we're going to do we're going to look at uh, subplot functionality so before we do that because it's a lengthy process it's a long code so what we can do before jumping to that uh, we'll take a break if that's okay with everyone can we take a break for next five or ten minutes or maybe 15 minutes if that's okay with everyone okay <laughs> yes please sure 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 so uh, we have you have a break for like 15 minutes okay great great so uh, be back by you know 12 20 21 now you know something of like that that point okay thank you so much everyone
Okay, so everyone is there. <clears throat> so we can start the session. Okay, what about the others? Okay, great. Great. So I hope the analogy that I gave you about Australian mountains and about these two figures give you the idea how a cost function works basically. Because every algorithm that you will come across in machine learning will have some sort of uh, some sort of cost function involved to it. And this is the gradient descent algorithm. This is the name given gradient is basically I hope you all are aware is the name for the derivative or the slope. Right. So with gradient or we call it greedy algorithm. Some people will say this is a greedy algorithm. It's very greedy for the lower uh, lowest cost. So we also say th this uh, thing to this algorithm that it's a greedy algorithm. So mo most of the algorithm will do the same thing whatever they try to do they will try to minimize the cost so it will be most of the cases it will be in this sum they will have some sort of a figure if it's a if they have a variable maybe multiple variable maybe in three maybe they have six variable five variables so then they will have different type of graphs you know maybe in six dimension four dimension you know it's really tough for, for you to visualize and to understand so you can just imagine this is what is happening to them it's like a valley and they are trying to reach to the lowest point of a particular valley. Right, so I guess. You can follow along with that. Now. Before I do this, what I'm going to do, I am going to. I'm going to show you how this uh, slope of a cost function is formed. How can we plot this slope slope of a cost function? So can somebody help me with that? Or do I need to help myself? Can somebody tell how can we plot this? What we want is slope slope of a cost function. Basically, we just want to plot the derivative. So please help me with the code. What should I write? What should I put in the plt dot plot? What should be my X and Y? It's clearly visible on the graph. What should be the X and Y? X is equals to Y is equals to. Okay, anyone else? Uh, Dr. Pant, you can reply and make it to make it for everyone. You know, reply not in private so that everybody can see your answer. So this is the answer Dr. Pant gave. No, this one, not this one. He gave the answer. Okay. Maybe X and Y values are same. X and Y, y values are same. So Pankaj Singh is saying X and Y values are same. So, okay, he is saying just because, you know, you have this graph of the sort, okay. There's a direct relationship that can be seen, but actually, <laughs> okay. And no, we want to plot the graph, ma'am. How should I plot this graph? That's what I'm saying. This is the graph that you can see. So Viduti said that I can do this. Okay, let's let's try to do this thing. But we don't have a variable as x1. Do we have a variable? It's x underscore one and then we have df. We have plotted the function graph. We want to plot the df graph now. Okay, I'll help you guys. I mean, you are struggling to solve it, so I'll help you. No problem. Yeah. 
so df and i'll pass the values of x plus one if i go and if i run it i might be able to see the plot i'll say plt dot show right i can also increase the line width i can also change the color but uh, we will do that in other section so now what we want we want those uh, these two graphs in the same cell okay let's let's look at that later on maybe let's uh, make this graph look like the same slope of the cost function write the title as slope of the cost function and then x variable uh, and on the x-axis we should have capital x and on the y-axis we should have df bracket x without plot so we can view plot yes yes we you can surely you can if i will i've explained this topic uh, i mean this this thing that you asked of the fund yesterday i've talked about it a lot that we had a discussion on it that can we see a plot without using plt dot show so if uh, let's let's do more you know on this graph so tell me how can i plot the title how can i plot the title the uh, values on the y axis the values on the x axis plt dot title okay what about the others what happened to the enthusiasm Are you guys losing interest? If that's the case, we need to write as slope of the cost function. Slope of the cost function. Yes, I have it. Now I want the X label has to be this, okay? Great. Okay. What about the Y? What should I write in the Y? PLT dot label for X. Great. What happened to the others? I mean, uh, you did not understand the code, or is it is it very tough? Uh, what is the reason? Okay, Viduti gave me the whole code. <laughs> okay, that's amazing, Viduti. <laughs> that's amazing. Great. Great, great, great. So we'll we'll plot your code as well, Viduti. We'll show it to everyone. So this is what I have, and let's plot the code that Viduti gave me. Let's see. Let's see how it works. Oh, uh, plt dot plot Viduti, there is a problem. X one, you are passing X one variable. Okay. Sir. Okay. Yeah, we need to change it to X underscore one, I guess. Yes. Font label. Yeah, X underscore one. Part should be like this. Does somebody want to say something? Hello. Yes. Sir, that's what I was saying. I have used x1 instead of x underscore 1. Why are you using two plots? I need the one plot. Why are you doing for two plots? Six. So in one, in one uh, graph, I've shown the function. And in the second graph, I've shown the slope. And I don't know how to merge them. So I showed them differently. OK, okay. Let's, not, let's not go there. Let's, let's not go there yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go step by step okay first of all tell me the code for this one i want my graph to look like this give me the code for this only not the whole code i'll talk about this there is another function that we have to use if we want to plot them together so i guess we have to do something about it yeah we've used it twice plt dot show x label x then y label is this okay 
on size is this this will work now i guess yeah so we have it here we have it here great vidushi great okay somebody is asking question okay i have used jadeep says no 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 what jadeep i did not understand my graph is showing number of slopes number of slopes so you need to try this code there must be something else that you are trying so the heading should be something of the sort the slope of a cost function so we will use this as a heading slope uh hang on or i'll say the color to be sky blue maybe sky why sky blue will it work yeah it will work please paste the code here okay i've sent it here in the comment chat window it's there okay it's going to private uh how do i change it Just hang on Was sharing the code, but it's going to to ML Panth only. Mm. Can somebody share the code, please? The same code. Uh, Viduti, can you share the code with everyone? The one that I have written here, the one that you shared with me. I am not able to do that. I guess. So. Okay. Okay. They gave me this code. Let's try this out. I mean, what does it say? Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah, Mr. Pant, it's the good one. Yeah. It'll work. Um, we can just keep it as DF. Yeah. Send button. put for everyone okay let me see that it's actually no it's not showing that to me i don't know why i don't i don't see that option so send to everyone i can't see that option that is what i was trying to do okay anyways you got the code now now everybody plotted this please type yes or no if you plotted this or not then we'll move forward then we'll see how can now if i want to yeah line width also can be done no sir so uh mr panth has shared the code he has shared the code you can use the same code please please look into your chat window you have the code there i mean i'm not able to share it i don't know why yeah so what i was talking about i was talking about the line width right line width let's keep the line width to be somewhere here to 5 let's run it yeah now it's looking good and let's have grid because we want to know where is the value coming out to be zero right so we want grids in our in our uh, chart so how can we do that is there a way that we can do it that we can have a grid in our chart 
yes we can surely do that plt dot grid is another function that we have if you want to have the grids in your now it's very it's very evident that the x value is coming out to be zero at this particular point right and at the, at the same point we have the slope zero because when we are going down and down as i have shown you in the presentation as well the slope will keep on decreasing the steepness of the slope will decrease and at a particular point it will be zero so this is the point where we have the cost function minimized where it is minimum right i guess you all are able to follow alpha yeah let's, let's not use alpha for now yeah, maybe we can use it. Let's see what difference does it make the code that Jadeep shared. Let's let's try this out. He's saying line style this, and then the alpha value is point four. But it removes the grid. I want the grid to be there. I want to see the grid, Jadeep. Now we will be using another function and that is going to be the subplot right so let's see how the subplot work subplot Is this the one? I guess it's not. No, it's not. I said sun plot. I'm sorry, guys. I told you guys I'm very bad in typing. Yeah, this is what we have. So this is the function that we want to use, the subplot. Okay, let's try to see what are the different arguments it has and let's try to work around them okay now let's move back to our code where is that yeah here it is so first of all what we have to do we have to set the figure size now that we have seen this graph what i'm going to do i'm just going to keep it as such maybe i'll do it in the next window the subplot that i'll draw i'll draw in the next window what I'm going to do, first of all, I am going to give it, I mean, the first chart that we have created, the plot one. That is what I'm going to do. I'm going to plot number one. This is plot one for the cost function. right this is the cost function plot that we have and uh, i can run it also and uh, this is the second plot that we have it's the slope of the cost function we'll try to put them together okay plot number two it's the slope of the cost function so what else do i need to use I might need to use this function, which is called subplot. Now, and what does this mean? One, two, one. This means the number of rows. This means the number of columns. I'll, I'll sh when you see the graph, you will, you will, you will understand what, what I mean by that. Okay. So let me show you that. And in this case, what we're going to do, we're going to keep it. This is going to be the index of the graph. It's going to be one. This is the first graph that we want. This is the second graph we want. Okay. Now let's try to run it. Let's see what happens. 
okay it's one above the other right so let's make it two two let's see what happens then it's still the same so let's keep it oh sorry so we are getting them one upon the other how should we get them side by side this is how we get it one comma two but for that we have to first of all set the figure size at what should be the figure let's not run it for now figure size we'll use just to avoid typing i am going to use it right now let's run it so see we are facing problem why what is the reason for it one comma two one comma two yes that's right so can somebody point out the mistake that we are doing that we are not able to see it can sir, somebody mm -hmm. so i yes, think yes. the difference in the limits of x and y not the limits we want the graph to be here it's, it needs to be here we'll talk about the limits maybe later on it's not required for now at least okay. so can you see the difference can you spot any difference that you can see here and here at the end okay what is the difference at the end this is what you're saying plt dot show that we have okay so let's do one thing let's let's comment yeah that was the difference i guess so if you will use two times plt dot show you will not have a subplot subplot means plot side by side right and what does this 15 comma 10 means let's try to tweak it and let's try to understand what does this means if i give the value to be 10 you will notice the difference first of all look at this graph for now and then once you spot the difference do let me know what's the difference okay okay can somebody tell me the difference what does the value suggest 10 comma 5 can somebody tell me what does the value signifies yes ma'am that's what i did i use it only once then okay i'll tell you then so basically it's the length and the width without this we get the correct plots yes we get the correct plots but we want them side by side that's what the subplot is for so we want them on side by side so let me talk about this it's 15 what does the figure and figure size means is basically this length and the breadth now i have some space left here so what i'll do i'll keep it 15. now you will notice that it covers the space now it covers the space right and what all other changes do we need in the graph we might need to change the color we might need to change the width so i'll do that rather than just typing it out again i'll just copy it and use it in my graph so here we have now we have exactly the same graph so we can now comment it out this one so that we can compare them right so is there any difference now are they same are they alike i guess they are 
with the color if we could change the color that would make a big difference sky if we can reduce the intensity of the color that would do that sky blue line width 5 let's run it and let's see what happens okay i don't have that mention it's not mentioned here so i'll mention that this is the color that i want sky blue now they are exactly the same now this part of the code that we wrote did you understand it or do you have any questions on that i'm getting two graphs within the same boundary that's what we want sir we want the two graph in the same boundary they are side by side right if they are not that means you are using the plt dot show no no then uh, you are getting you might be getting it this way like this you are getting it then how you are saying you are getting graph on top of another graph so this is what the subplot functionality does we can do the comparison within the same rectangle then you might have <laughs> messed up with the code somebody can share the code with dr suresh chandra please please share the code Sir, you can compare the code. Not... sorry what did you say i think uh, dr suresh i think dr suresh has missed out on the plt dot subplot lines i just tried it now without the subplot lines then i also got the same thing that he's saying he okay got. okay so i think so you have missed out the subplot line plt dot subplot it's 1 comma 2 that means the first row and the columns that we are talking about we have two columns this is going to be at the first position if i change the value let's say i make it 2 and let's say i make it to be 1 then uh, can you tell me the difference that we will have on the graph can somebody point out the difference what is going to be the difference if i say 2 up here and 1 up here what does that means does that change anything anything not you need to ma'am not you anyone else viduti uh, you also not tell this someone else please tell me can you tell me this difference that we'll have in the graph when i put the value 2 up here and 1 up here what is going to be the difference i'll give you 1 minute i guess we have to see that so now can you spot the difference it's clearly visible i guess they have shifted their location now so this is what one this is what 1 and 2 is for the last parameter that we have this is the purpose of this parameter okay great now what we want to do we want to write down a loop for the gradient descent because as i said we are at this particular point we will be plotting slope slopes at different points and we want to reach to this particular point right so for that how can we do that that means we should be knowing we should know about for loops and while loops so all of you are aware of for loop and while loops how many you how many of you are actually aware about the for for loops and what is while loop what is for loop and while loop in python please type out yes or no aware okay great so i don't need to explain you that right is is there anyone who doesn't know about for loop priti she doesn't know anyone else who doesn't know about for loop or while loop in python okay pankaj also doesn't know dr pankaj so rest of the people they know about the for loop right 
okay okay great so what we'll do we'll try to understand what a for loop is for in python okay why do we even need a loop first of all let's try to understand that okay so i'll say uh, loops in python okay so when we want to do the iteration so let's let's do one thing let's do one thing let's uh i mean what should we do yeah let's create a code and let's try to understand preeti what does a for loop do okay so i'll say for i in range this is the function that i'm using a range function that we have for the list we haven't talked about it but uh, you'll you'll understand once you see the code for i in range 5 print maybe what we can print we can print maybe hello and the value of i the generic thing that we do when we learn programming hello world then we'll also ask it to print the value of i let's see what happens so what it did basically a loop if i say the range function what does a range function do so let's have let's create a list which is l1 and assign let's try to find out the values for the range 5 what does what are the values that it has it's very evident but yeah let's try to address it now let's go and check the value for l1 does it store any values or not no it doesn't store the value we have to convert that value into list first of all yeah so the range function what it does basically it uh, gives you five values starting from zero as we know indexing start indexing start from zero in python so it gives you five values zero one two three four so what is going to happen Preeti in the loop first of all it's going to go and check the value for the range function it is going to get value as zero it is going to go and print hello world and write zero on the side then again it is going to go and it is going to check the value for the range and so on and so forth it will have different values of one two three four so these are the values that we have for the range so when the values for the range or the function that we supply here ends then the loop is going to stop automatically if we want we can add something else and so that we should be aware that the loop has ended we can say maybe end of the loop cool so preeti did you understand what i'm trying to explain or dr pankaj did you understand dr pankaj and whoever did not have any idea about loops did you guys understand what the loop is why do we need loop we need loop for the iteration to do the same task again and again until some condition satisfy uh what about pankaj is he there i guess he's there dr pankaj you there okay might be he's busy okay so this was the for loop now do you guys know preeti do you know about while loop also Do we know about the while loop? No, sir. Okay, cool. So we'll look into the while loop also. So in while loop, what happens is that we have, first of all, we have some condition that we want to meet. Until the time that condition is not met, the loop will continue running. Right? So it's that kind of loop. So let's say that. Uh, let's say i have a counter i'm um, let's say i'm counting the values right so i'll say the value initially it's going to be zero so what i'll say i want to count only five values is because i think i need only five values so what i'll say till the time the value is less than five keep on doing the task this task that i gave you 
I might give it some task. So I'll say keep on doing this. So I'll say print and say counting and then we'll say counter and then what we can do is we can increase the value because initially it was zero it will do the comparison and it will print this now what we want to do we want to increase the value otherwise this loop is never going to stop so what we have to do we have to increase the counter we can say counter is equals to counter plus one okay this is what we need to do that's very important and then what we can say ready or not ready here i come or simply we can say print while loop has been ended let's run it okay now preeti did you follow or whoever did not understand it did you get it great so if i will make it minus 1 what will happen is that the loop will continue running and this will never stop and might i might have to restart my computer because this i might have to you know restart the kernel it might get freeze or something so you can try it if you really want to do that after the session you know so what you can do is uh, uh, because the value is going to decrease when we say counter minus 1 then it is going to become minus 1 then minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 so it's never going to be less than you know greater than 5 or equal to 5 right so that's why we need to make sure while specifying any condition we need to make sure that condition is going to met at a particular time otherwise we will have problems lots and lots of problems okay now we have understand about the slope and we have understand about the function how the function plotting is let's try to plot this let's try to see we want to check the slope at different different points and we want to reach at this particular point so what should we do for that let's try to look at that so this is the gradient descent algorithm yeah this is the gradient descent algorithm why i get op counting zero sir i did not understand why i get this output counter zero so because you are using the loop in a different way let me show you this this is your loop right so make sure it's okay yeah the reason why because uh, you have this loop under this the indentation if i take it back then it will run only once otherwise it will run the same number of times that the previous loop is running because it is going to follow the same condition thank you for putting that question great now we are going to look at the gradient descent algorithm how does it works basically and we'll do the superimposition and also draw the graph it's a quite lengthy course that we have but we'll see the best possible that we can understand it i'll try to cover it in 30 minutes okay so let's add some lines so what we want to do we want to use the gradient descent algorithm now we have understand how does a gradient descent algorithm does works how it is going to work it is going to be at a particular point then it is going to draw the slope then it will start moving then it will check again and it will again Uh, find the slope. It will move, start moving, start moving, start moving, start moving, and until the point it reaches to this. 
right it will keep on moving so let's try to look at what exactly we need to conduct this task we need three variables basically i'll tell you why do we need these variables three variables let's say these are the three variables that we need new x previous x and step multiplier so what does this mean the new x is going to be the first step that i am going to take in a particular direction the previous x is going to be the value wherein i will be storing my future values like uh, the way i explained in this because we might predict a value we might predict any value we might calculate the error we go back and then we update the value right we will be updating the value after finding out the error so that's that's the value that's a temporary variable that we assign so could you first just share this code able to follow simultaneously okay but uh, i'm not able to share it that is the problem no? So I'm not getting that option for sharing to everyone. I'm getting option to share it with private. That is the problem. So he, so you could send it to LM Pant and he would forward it to everyone then. Okay, cool. Because we were now we we typing and then we miss out on parts. Yeah, sure, sure. So I guess this has been sent okay, to Mr. Pant. Mr. Pant, can you send it to everyone? If that's possible from your end, I have shared this with him. Okay, please do that. Great. So uh, now you, you must have understood this terminology. Why we are using this, this is a, just a temporary variable that we have taken where we will be when we will be updating our steps. So we'll be storing that value because our step might have different values at different iterations. So I guess he shared the code. Everybody can have a look. And we'll go step by step so that you can understand. I'm trying to break down the code for you. So the step multiplier is going to be the step that I'm going to take. Or you, some people call it learning rate. Some people call it alpha. Right. It is going to be the because if I am at this particular point, then I need to move. So by how much amount I'll be moving. I'll, whether I'll be taking a bigger step or whether I'll be taking a smaller step. So I'll be taking smaller steps so that I can make sure that I'm not making any mistake by going in the wrong direction. So there are multiple, multiple reasons for it. We will talk about them maybe later on that there, it causes problem for underfitting, overfitting. So we'll talk about them, you know. So because we will be taking small steps, right? And once we get closer to it, the steps will, will be getting more smaller because the slope will be decreasing, right? So these are going to be our steps that we will be taking in the slope. And the precision, we'll talk about the precision, what the precision is. So for now, what we will do, we will have this iteration. First of all, what we will do, we will do this. We will have one loop and this loop will work like this. I'll explain you how this loop work. So we want to take only 500 step. This is going to be the step size, the step multiplier. This is going to be the step size and we want to complete. We want to, we want is to reach at this level at 500 steps. Maybe it could take less. Maybe it could take more initially what we will do we will try to note we'll try to see that we want to cover that distance maybe in 10 steps we want to cover that distance in uh, 10 steps now what i'm doing here the value that i have for the new which is uh, the value that i got from the lin space as i have my value starting from three and I am at this point, so obviously this value must be plus positive value, so it's three. So that's why I'm taking. If you can, we'll talk about this later on, maybe. Uh, for now, let's let's focus on this. So we are taking three value, and uh, what we are saying, we will assign this new value to the previous x. 
as i said this is going to be just a temporary variable to store our value after each updation so preeti you need to understand this everybody follows because they know about the for loop but this is how it works in for loop it is going to run the loop and once it runs it will update every time it will update the value right it will assign that particular value that we have for the new x to this one then what is going to happen it is going to calculate the gradient that is the derivative of that particular value because as i said if it is at this point it must be moving to this point so we want to calculate the gradient at this particular point and then we want to take a next step so first step it has to take you know so that's why we are telling that 3 is the random value that we gave so let's come back again and now we are getting the new value now it's going to be the new position after taking some step he will be at a new position so what that new position is going to look like the previous step that he has taken multiplied by the step multiplier and the gradient descent so how does it work basically if it is at this point particular point if it is moving towards this point then obviously we have to subtract this value it is taking some step based upon what gradient value based upon the gradient this is also called converges theorem this is the fixed formula that we have this is for the converges form uh, convergence theorem and what does this mean when we want to reach to this particular level we have to follow this this procedure we have to take gradient descent every point and then we have to update our value now we have this now let's see we have this value now what we want to do we want to calculate the values for what what values we are getting for x what is the value for the slope what is the value of a cost function let's try to run it and let's see what do we get after that so as you can see the local minima is minus 0 minus point uh 0.12 right and uh, this is a little beyond than the zero this is on negative side it is going towards this side because the reason why because we have taken a very less amount of step now let's imagine that you are at this particular point and you want to reach at this particular point somebody comes and say you have to cover this distance only in 10 steps so obviously you have to take bigger steps right you might have to take bigger steps so you might have reaching at this point you might reach at this point because you'll be coming at a descent and you might be at a speed so you might reach at this point and if somebody say you can you have to reach at this particular point but you can take small steps maybe you can take 50 steps so you will take 50 you will come you know slowly slowly you will take small steps and then slowly you might reach closer to this point so that was the case for that was the case that when we talk about uh, where is it go yeah that is the local minimum value that we have got now let's see what's the slope is so uh, if we talk about the slope still we are at this particular point somewhere close to this point right this is the value for x or somewhere here right it's somewhere here yeah so we haven't reached at this local we want the slope to be zero at this particular point so there is a difference are you guys able to follow what i'm trying to explain please type yes or no thoda bahut thoda thoda okay 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 no problem so what we are doing now then we are checking the value of the function that what is the value of the function so the value of the function is coming out to be 7 0.75 so is that the minimum value that we have for the function not not this one this was our value it's it, it's 89 0.89 these were the previous values yeah it's coming out to be as 8 9 so that means where we have the value 8 9 
it might be somewhere close to this point if you look at this somewhere here right so it's not closer to this point we want the value to come at this level so what we will do then we will increase the iteration and we'll notice that you'll notice a difference does it makes any difference or not so it does makes a difference now you can see the local minima if i make it you can see this value slow value let's go back and let's see the difference so first it was minus one two it was seven five it was eight nine now i have increased the iterations i want to update my value 100 times right so i want to take 100 steps you can say now you can see the value is decreasing can you see that and the same way we do it we might we also try to increase it again and see the difference and then we select the appropriate value right so this coming out to be this value two and this to be so 100 could be the best value that i can say but now you can tweak around with this maybe you can make the value 500 and you can see let's see let's make it 500 let's see the difference so the slope is increasing but they are constant right it's not increasing it's in negative direction because it's this value right it's very small basically so we can also keep five okay now what we want to do what is happening in the other part of the code this is what we got what is happening in the other part of the code now we want to uh, we don't know you know uh, how many steps we should take so we want to create a variable that we can know about the step size what should be the step size right we can know we want to know that how what is the best step size that I should choose that I should reach to the minimum level? Because might be what, what happened is that if I have 500 steps, it might reach at this particular point, maybe at this particular point, maybe this particular point, which is not the minimum value. And we don't even know, you know how many steps exactly we should take. We are only going to come to know that when we will walk through this mountain, when we'll walk through this valley, so we want uh, we want to tweak our algorithm we want to tweak our functions in a way that it can decide that automatically right so this is what we can do the step size this is what you know you can do to do that step size okay yeah So, can you see this now? The step size that we are getting? This is almost like 12 standard. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, yes, yes. So, this is the global minima. We call it to be global minima, a local minimum. This is the point that we want to reach. Okay. So, we could have, you can see there is no change happening here. So let's do one more thing. Let's let's go back. I want to make my code messy. I'm just gonna comment it out. And great, you get it. Now what we wanna do, we want to create a list and a precision new variable precision. Precision how, you know, the precision that we have here till what point we want the precision to be. That will also increase the accuracy of a model or the algorithm so we have decided the precision sh should be we can keep it low first of all might be we can keep it 0 0.001 and then what we want to do we want to create a we want to check the new value that what is the new value you know getting updated i know you might not be getting it for now but uh, when we will look at this graph then you will have a better understanding how all these things are happening i'll try to under make you understand this graph also okay yeah so i i have created because i want to store my, every time when i'm moving where is my value going i want to store that value 
this new step size which is coming right new step size is getting updated every time right now i want to store that value in a list which is called x list and i also want to store the slope value because this is how i can show you that how the slope is changing over time right this is how i can show you that i can prove that whatever i'm saying it's truth and it's visible it will be visible in the form of graph to us so this is this is why i have done it but i have created a list now i need to append these values into this list so append is a function that we have in list with the help of which we can put in the value in a particular list so okay cool let's let's not talk about this for now precision will talk about this later on now we have created this list these two list where we have where we are updating the value for the new x and where we are updating the value for the slope now what we want to do we want to tweak around with the step size we said we want that value to be absolute how can we do that we can do that with the help of this loop let's put this in the code and let me try to make you understand what this loop is doing okay so it's it is saying file so I'll, I'll share the code with you for now don't run the code i'll share the notebook with you then you can run it for now just look at the just look at the code that i'm trying to explain understanding it's more important than you know applying you can apply it after the class as well so what i'm saying if the step size is less than the precision value then loop ran this many times i need to know how many time it ran now you might be thinking where this n is coming from right this is the n that we have defined up at the top because it might be running 500 times right but we want to do the interruption in that we don't want our our gradient descent or our cost function to go at this point we want it to stop at this point maybe what happens when we run 500 loops it might go to this point maybe what happens when we run 100 loops it might come to this point so we want a parameter that we can use which will stop the loop automatically once it reached to this level once it reached to a precision a particular precision that we want so that's what i did here i said if the step size is less than less than the precision then please break the loop then loop is then tell me how many times this loop has run and break the loop now i'll show you once i run the code what is the difference so this loop has been broken now now fx value is this the loop has run it will tell me how many times this loop has run it's not working actually there is some problem with it print i need to put out of the loop i'm sorry guys yeah my bad yeah so see this loop has run only 50 times and we have reached to the kind of precision that we wanted and we were putting values of uh, step size sometime 100 sometime 500 that was very huge and due to which it was going to some other levels due to which it was going to this point maybe maybe this point maybe this point maybe this point you know when we are putting different value now we have recognized it that this is the number of step size that we wanted now what what we did so far we have run the loop now from uh, for reaching from this point to this point we have taken 50 steps and every time whenever we are taking the step we are checking the slope and which is the shortest distance we are going towards that distance and we are updating our position we are coming at this position we are checking the shortest distance with the help of slope we are moving forward again at this point 
we check the shortest distance and we move forward and so on and so forth that's how we reach at this particular time this point so did you follow what did i blabbered about did you get it <laughs> did you understand so somebody was saying getting it little bit who was that trying dr vinita was saying she was trying so dr vinita i need practice yeah sure i mean that's very important but did you get it for now at least you understood right whatever is happening in the loop great because you are the one who's saying she, uh, i'm trying now uh, we don't have much time left so what we'll do i'll try to explain you what this code is doing the big code that we have here i'll try to share it with you also oh no yeah what is this big amount of code is doing okay let's try to look at it so basically what we are doing with the help of this code we are superimposing the gradient descent calculation on the plot the gradient descent that we have calculated using this for loop and this short algorithm that we have written we will try to plot it because visualizing stuff make you understand things better right and i i'm also a believer of this thing that till the time i don't see things i don't believe them so mr pant if you could share this code with everyone that would be really helpful please do it with share it with everyone so that they can try out this code uh, this code also i've shared it with you if you could share it with everyone that would be really great so what i have done first of all this command must be everybody is familiar with this is the figure size that i have given now i will be using a subplot function i need three plots in this case that's why i have 1 comma 3 comma 1 and one signifies my first plot what is my first pl plot is going to be my first plot is going to be this plot second plot is going to be this plot and third plot we talk about that so first plot where is that yeah i have yeah yeah okay all right so my first plot in the first plot what is happening i'm plotting the cost function you can see the title the label i'm plotting the value for x and the function of x the line weight the alpha value and what we are saying we are storing now the values for see there are two types of plot which you can see on this one of them is the plot that we have the normal plot that we have like this one this one and this one then the other one is a scatter plot due to which these points we are able to see these points okay so this is what we did scatter plot is also a kind of plot which will scatter all the points in your x and y axis let's look at the scatter plot what does a scatter plot look like in python so this is what a scatter plot look like in python it will scatter all the points you know tell where the where the point is right now it will tell me the values in my x and y axis so i'm using scatter plot on top of the pi plot that i have this is a pi plot and on top of it i'm using scatter plot so you can see i have stored the values of the x list the x list that i have created up here in which i have stored the value of new x which was my position which was being updated all the times okay then what i did i plotted those values i plotted my x list with the values of f, uh, f uh, with i passed in the values every time with uh, with time over time how the values are changing i gave it a color red and s 100 and this is for the thickness and also the alpha value as point 6 in the same way when i talk about derivative i plot this graph i guess you all are familiar with this code and again the same thing is happening when i draw the scatter plot the scatter plot i have the x list and the slope list the two list that i have created on the top how the slope value is changing with the change in the value of x 
so that is what i'm trying to plot on the other side and with the last plot that i have i am trying to get a close up of this particular point i want to see these point closely so this is what happening in the last section so i want my x limb to be minus 0.5 and to be minus 0.2 and y limb to be minus 0.3 minus 0.8 and also then I put these scatter values that I have, and this is what I get after it. So you can see this is the point where my point was lying at the initial stage. When we started this gradient descent, we, we told that this point is at three. So this value, call it to be three. Let's say this value is three. Now, after taking number of steps, you can see the first step that it took, it was very large. It took a very long step. It, uh, not, uh, I'm sorry. So uh, it's here, it's here basically. I'm so sorry. So this was the slow basically. I'm so sorry guys, I'm so sorry. So my point was at this particular position on the slope, right? I checked my slope and I checked, I found the distance the least distance to cover and to reach to the point this is the point that i need to go so this is the slope that i have and this is the cost that i have at the starting of the loop when i take my first step i reach at this point on the cost function my cost get reduced and my derivative at this point i come back at this point then i check my derivative i move to another point same thing happened with these uh, with the cost function it gets reduced and so on and so forth it gets reduced now you can see there is a lot of intensity when we are trying to reach to the local minima or the global minima point right because the reason for that the step size is going to decrease when we are about to reach to the minimum value the step size is going to decrease a lot that is why i have this close up at this particular Point, how it is taking the step it is taking this tiny step this step this step this step this step and so it is reaching to this point which is at which the slope is zero and that's what we have talked about where the slope is zero at that particular point we have our function cost function to be zero right i have shown you that in the picture yeah at this particular point as we can see at this particular point we have our slope zero and our cost function is zero this is our slope this is a cost function we are having a zero slope and also the cost function is zero so this is the proof that yes we have achieved the zero cost we have achieved the minimum cost okay so that was it for today's session guys so do you have any questions for me sir yes so in simple terms what is a cost function <laughs> simple term this is the cost function this one that we have here the difference between the actual value and the predicted value we are trying to reduce that difference. Let's say I gave you a question and I, I asked you to solve that question. And the answer for that particular question is 100. And your answer, the first time when you attempted that question, you had an answer maybe 50. I said, this is wrong. And you need to learn something, come back again. Then you went back and you learned something new and you solved that question again. The next time when you came, you had an answer approximately 60. And I said, you are doing well, you need to do more. Then you came for the next time and so, so on the answer keep on increasing. You are now getting closer to the original value. So this is what the cost function does. It try to reduce the error, the mistake that, we, that our algorithm making in predicting the value, the original value. So that's what the cost function is. <laughs> Today, uh, was a little tough today yeah. yes ma'am that's why i kept it on the fourth day so that you could have a little understanding before we go into this section 
but uh, yeah. nandesh it's been uh, rather interesting and uh, <laughs> because the, the last part i could uh, go through especially uh, the gradient descent because i have been a great admirer greater i mean this gradient descent and uh, this hill climbing because yeah. uh, for any ai and especially for this back propagation uh, this is for supervised learning uh, right. this is very important and the cost function possibly vibhuti was asking it's so very important because ultimately learning right. has to be machine has to have uh, better learning you know and for right. better learning yes cost function is important and for right. that uh, gradient descent happens to be i mean uh, not only these days we have other algorithms also but you right. have given a very good account of uh, this thing will you be also right. talking about hill climbing as to uh, what is uh, uh, this thing tomorrow will you be covering or straight away you will go in for uh, this ann based or this back propagation uh, what, what will you be, you be covering sir i am i am actually confused that what should i do because if i i'm thinking if i jump into you know uh, neural networks for now it might be very tough for them to understand so no no don't do that I mean, don't do dilemma, don't, I mean, don't do dilemma that. right now so what should i do that's what you i was should thinking. not be in dilemma you should not be in dilemma in fact because what you have <laughs> you have done justice to this program and the basics and right. um, uh, so many terms and important ones and logics you have already covered and right. i think our uh, very serious participants and i am uh, pretty happy because now we have a team of you know all these very learned participants who would also be working on different projects so right. it is good and you take your own call i mean whatever you 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 feel like maybe you can also mm-hmm. have inputs from the participants these uh, 20 25 those very very keenly interested yes, participants sir. so you sure, can sir. plan it accordingly because tomorrow is the concluding day from right. 11 to 1 o'clock 1:30 it is so we will have this feedback thing other things other responses so maybe we will have some kind of a you know e validatory kind of concluding session so we will right, have sir. all that you you take a call if you feel it fine you can go ahead with it otherwise you right. can just give an you know introduction basic to basic yes, uh, yes, basic yes, song of uh, n that's all yes sir i'll try to give introduction about cnn the basic network that we have or I'll, i have oh. create created uh, i'll try to show them the basic network they can create their own i have it prepared the basic cnn with a few lines of code it's a, not this one this one is tough the basic cnn that we have so if we talk about the advanced one i mean it's it's it's, it's a very long code sir i mean to explain and they might not get it at the first place so no no so it, this was this was i was i'll but, try but, to explain but, but, and, and you will and you will also be very happy because we have uh, these participants who are not only keenly interested they they, they chipping in with their very very uh, knowledgeable comments and i i simply loved it and i i, I could overhear you know their comments so right, sir, right. It, it is so nice and that, it is that, so very encouraging for us right so that's keeps me you know motivating for creating such content for them i mean so that i can explain them you know in a simple term so that they can understand otherwise i thought of explaining oh. this multiple minima initial guesses you know all these stuff how the cost function works slope of a function gradient descent yeah. python function all this stuff is uh, so it's going to take a lot of time i guess so maybe we can talk so about covid more so covid 19 has given this opportunity you know <laughs> so right. so it has been a boon rather than a bane at times so it has given them this time you know, some time right. to muse over to ponder over and to you know just be in sync with the machine learning that is important right right sir i just came i just came with this you know motivation that if i can intrigue you know the learning in them that they they want to learn yeah. more so that is the best thing that i can do from my end yeah. intrigue is the right term maybe they can come up with a few comments vibhuti right. and all those uh, these wonderful participants maybe they can chip in with one or two comments mr sure, pant no, also because he is sharing documents so he can also uh, come in sure sure so sure. yeah over to them uh, sir i am alam pant uh, this is very nice uh, to uh, do the coding with the uh, screen uh, i mean online uh, coding 
it is very uh, i mean uh, enthusiastic exercise uh, for today and uh, i think uh, uh, tomorrow will be the very uh, uh, important day for all of us because we, we are getting into uh, another uh, i mean uh, uh, another dimension of this course and uh, my request is that uh, deep learning is one of the important uh, field nowadays so one overview please for one slide or two slide you can add to your uh, this presentation sure sure i'll do that for sure that is that is doable deep learning uh, nandesh what you can do deep yes, learning sir. part and uh, basically ann and back propagation little bit of so yes, sir, that yes. part ann this thing and how different layers do uh, work maybe couple of hidden layers in between so you can chip in with all that maybe yes, um, not much but he is right then we can have a newer uh, you know this online program and deep learning dedicated to deep learning only that right, part sir, we right. can do. and sir right. and sir i have one okay. specific i i am having one specific problem i will discuss you later on uh, after uh, this this course finishes and uh, i can get some idea from you to solve that problem yeah 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 anything anything especially if it is with the reference to uh, you know um, these these problems because there are n number of projects because we were also talking about uh, projects and especially machine learning specific projects if you have any such idea so we can start working on that so that is not an yeah, issue yeah, yeah, but course. kindly share right, your sir. experience with the community know about it how effective right, right, because sir. today only i was i was a part of a group fikis higher education committee so second meeting was uh, there today and uh, you know in pune other places they are discussing as to how to go about it and here you are attending a high end program so you should yeah. you should all because you are very very important members of the society community you share your experience on social media other things that how it has been so that not only we are motivated and encouraged but other such people they also get excited you know and encouraged to the extent they, they, that they also activate a few program initiate a few programs so kindly so kindly express you know your views on social media as to how your experience has been because yeah. india and you know is... now onward word, word is no longer the same so we will be we we got to move towards you know more online thing other things so for that because you are uh, the, the the participants who are the first one you have already emerged into this beautiful beautiful foray so let us uh, enjoy and let us uh, give away your opinion so it 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 is going to be very crucial for you sir especially for science and technology our department for open university for brilika and for all those people so you can if you feel like you can acclaim you can say it was a good experience so it will be very handy for yes. us yes yes other yeah. other it other it is a very good very 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 good initiative sir it, uh, it was uh, very appreciable and uh, i think it will definitely help us yeah yeah thank you thank you other other responses Nandish. maybe a few hello yes yes please go on सो यू वर सेंग ना कि आपने आगे भी प्लान करा हुआ था एक्चुअली आज के लिए ग्रेडियंट डिसेंट के ऊपर ही थोड़ा और राइट तो सर आई थिंक यहाँ तक तो सबको समझ आ ही गया है तो आगे का जब आप अभी भेजेंगे हम लोगों को तो आप वो वाला पार्ट भी भेज ही दीजिएगा वी कैन लर्न ऑन आर ओन ऑल्सो ना यस यस आई शेयर दिस नोटबुक विद यू ऑल दिंग्स आर कवर्ड इन दिस नोटबुक and you can try if you can learn you know if you can understand what this code signifies that will be like really great if you could Hanji, understand this i don't think it would be such a problem for anyone right 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 vibhuti from that. which organization sir so i am a third year student in uh, in bit university bit you are yes hello velor no vibhuti is, is it is, is it velor university no sir dehradun institute of technology Where is this 
Okay, 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 fine. It is because today I was interacting with the Vice Chancellor of Velour and Shivnadar and uh, Symbiosis. So Velour was uh, playing, you know, in my mind. So <laughs> DIT. Okay, so you are in Dehradun. So any time round, you can come over, you can discuss, and uh, you can be part of this machine learning and AI group that we have. So we can share experiences and any problem you have, so you can discuss at length. So online discussions we can have, we can have chat forums, we can have other things. So we can start doing it. So not an issue. This is not the end of tunnel, you know. We, we, it, it is just a beginning. So maybe we can have better, better, better ways of interacting. Uh, yes, yeah. more, more, more responses. Were your response? Lagta hai lunch ki tayari ho gayi hai. I think they are tired, sir. You know, after learning about cost function and all, they might get tired. Nahi, wo gradient gradient descent ke baad hill climbing shuru hoti hai. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. <laughs> hill climbing is very important, especially for. Cost estimation when machine does not, you know, predict it properly. Right. Sir. Especially Amazon had this problem. Yes. So the response, if there is no other response, and um, all is quiet at Western Front, so I would again like to thank Nandesh for mm -hmm. again this very very interactive, very very lucid uh, session. We all loved it, and uh, God bless you, Nandesh. And tomorrow happens to be our uh, this uh, concluding day. So looking right. forward to it. There are shareable items, mails and this and other things. So right. we can have all of that. One of you may create a short of a WhatsApp group also. So right. we can have all serious discussions, you know, but we can use that forum. So, sure, so sure. thank you so much, Nandesh. And uh, so much. goodbye for the day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. So I will share this notebook with you and you can go and you can run this code that we have and then you can understand it and if you can understand the further concepts which are explained in the not notebook that will be amazing you can give it a shot at least because there are many things that are expa explained here that is a divergence overfitting overflow you know lots of things are there about tuple about learning rate how learning rate affects you know about different graphs that we have 2d 3d graphs about partial derivatives there are so many things you know that that are covered rss uh, mse and all that stuff you know you can look at it and uh, maybe you can have an idea what is going on with it please tell me your email id okay just give me a second Wait, I'm sharing my email ID. If anybody wants, they can uh, have it. And I'll ask the team to share the today's notebook with you all. Uh, Mr. Pant, if you could share that email with everyone, that would be great. I have shared it with you. If you could share it with everyone, that would be lovely. Okay, please comment it down. And uh, once the once you go, you know, after the session, what you can do, you can just go back and uh, revise the notebook that I have explained today. And maybe if you have some doubts tomorrow, we can address them. And we'll try to tomorrow. We'll try to cover deep learning, the basic concepts of deep learning. How does it work and everything else? So thank you so much for your time. Have a great day and bye bye. चलो जी यहां चप्पल नहीं आपके लिए दूसरी चप्पल में जो बताऊंगा